Peace of the Lord, my brethren. Look, the text is Songs, Songs of Solomon, chapter 8. Songs of Solomon 8. I think I preached it before. I was on a seminar. It was a seminar, a large, one of the largest seminars. And they gave me a class to teach, and I went to teach. And when I arrived, they sh showed in the projection another class, and I began to speak. And behind me was another class. And everybody started speaking. Hey, this is another class thing I'm teaching. So then what I looked was another topic. So I had to go back all the way. So I'm afraid of these things. <laughs> they say, yeah, you go to another place. You already preached this here, so I'm not sure. So let's go. They said that they didn't, so let's go. Uh, Songs of Solomon, chapter verse... Chapter 8, verse 6. Chapter 8, verse 6. And 7. You're sure, right? I'm sure, absolutely, right. Set me as a seal. Did I preach about it or didn't I? I did. I told you I preached about it. I was sure that I preached about this. Last week, I told you I had preached about it. <laughs> I almost... Okay. It was going to be uh, uh, not so long, so now go to chapter 1st. This is long. I thought that I had a read. I really remember experience. I remember when I mentioned experience that you didn't sleep in the class. Joel chapter 1st. Job chapter 1. I looked there and I thought, man, I'm sure that I preached about it. And he's younger than I. Look. He slept. No, he didn't sleep. <laughs> this one, I'm sure that I didn't preach. The two first verses is a topic a little bit long, but I tried to summarize it. Since we speak, spoke about chapter 2, on a message that was supposed to be on the first, it was delivered on uh, Thursday. We're going to speak about chapter first. First chapter, Joel, from verse two. Did you open Joel? Did you open Joel? Yeah. Joel one two. Hear this, you elders, and give ear, all your inhabitants of their land. Has anything like this happened in your days or even in the days of your p uh, fathers? Tell your children about it. Let your children tell their children and their children another generation. The book of Joel is a book that I, s I said on Thursday, which is a book of the Old Testament that speaks the most about the church. There was a period in which there was a current of um, scholars of the Jewish canon. They even thought that the book of Joel could not be part of the Jewish canon. Because in no moment he mentions Israel. You see from chapter 1 to 13, he doesn't mention Israel. He speaks of the inhabitants of the earth. Look. Hear these, you elders, and give ear all the inhabitants of their land. So, this is a message that pro universal prophecy is not speaking regarding a spe specific people, but is is speaking to all the peoples and make it as a narration to the children and to their children and to those children to the future generations. So, in other words, is a sequence of uh, dictation. So, the first chapter of the book of Joel, you will observe, he prophesies exactly 
about the church and its period of the end in its last instance I said on Thursday the church has the first phase which is called the first church called the primitive church was the first of the first century the church of the first uh, battles where the doctrine was generated everything that happened the first church and the Bible describes another church in the book of Revelation is considered as the church of Laodicea so what was the last church the last church is the one that precedes the second coming of Jesus this is the church that is going to go through the beginning of pains but it's not going to leave the pains it will have to face the beginning of pains described in chapter 24 myth Matthew it participates on the beginning of pains but it's not going to leave the great period of pains which is a period of great tribulation with, where the church is no longer going to be here because together with the church the Holy Spirit will live so the world will be uh, under the power of the enemy of all souls that's what's going to be the, the trial so the prophet Joel describes the church exactly in this period in which the church lives and he speaks about what is going on with the church the first chapter says the following there are about it so now he describes um, a field like a harvest and he describes what had happened with this harvest was it in other words was a destruction imagine a farm and, and a plague that came and destroyed everything so look what he says look the field of the harvest look how he describes it what was left of the of the This, this, you know, what was left of the insect was eaten by the locusts. The locusts not only eat the, the leaves, but eat even the, the whatever is left of the plant. So, what was left of the locusts the locusts eat it. It's even the, the shell of the plant. And what was left from the locusts the insects ate until the root it's like a, a play a complete plague it destroys everything there is nothing left so the prophet what is joy saying joy had a vision he's describing here a vision and this is a vision chapter first this is a very prolonged vision and it's like the, uh, similar to the vision on of chapter 21 but giving a different focus of the church so in chapter 21 that John a vision that John had they shout to me from Syria the seed of Syria so th that text that you already know it was a theme of a message is similar to this so it's a moment of the church a specific moment of the church it says like this Awake, you drunkards, drunkards, and weep, and all, and wail, all you drinkers of wine, because of the new wine, for it has been cut off from your mouth. So he speaks of a people. The vineyard is describing the vineyard is completely destroyed. Awake, because the wine has been removed. So what is the wine? When you speak about the wine, wine speaks of the blessing of the Spirit, it speaks of the joy of the Spirit, it speaks of the operation of the Spirit. It has a symbolism on the Old Testament. Uh, it's related to the blessing of the Spirit. And he says the following Awake, you drunkards, and weep, and wail all you drunkards of wine, because of the new wine. For a nation has come up against my land. So a nation w was raised against uh, my nation. So he, what is the action that he's speaking? Speaking of the action of the world against the church, how the world 
went towards the, the church and entered into the church. So he has a vision. And he speaks of my land. What is my land? My land is the people of God. He is the prophet. The Lord is speaking about my land, my people, a nation which is not my nation. So he, he is, is a nation was raised against my land. And the teeth are like teeth of lion. So a, a nation that came up and their greatest objective is flesh. He speaks of uh, old lion, speaks of flesh. So the objective is flesh. Everything that is done is done in function of flesh. In Christianity, it was lost in it. He speaks of the church as being completely dismantled because of this. The church lost control over it. Christianity that is out there does not have control over it. You see, there is a terrible struggle to uh, deliver the truth and the lesson. There are things that have been done. It's just terrible. With all due respect, but the laws sometimes they exist. They can't. The action was so violent that the laws may not prevent a few things from happening. You see, in every country, laws, violent laws, there are even sometimes uh, even uh, unfair laws, but the attempt uh, my son-in-law is a judge and he's, he, I was talking to him and he was saying there are things that, for example, there are some laws that are violent, for example, there are s certain actions in Brazil and here must be the same. There are some crimes. There are certain crimes that you don't need any proof But there is one crime that there is no need any proof. Sexual abuse. You don't need to have any proof. There was a young lady in Brazil. If you make an accusation, you don't need proof. You go to jail is a terrible thing. So you see, the attempt of coming up with something, because the moment now is flesh. So the TVs, the promiscuity of TV, the promiscuity of the internet, the promiscuity of the magazines is a terrible thing. And you can say, no, there's no limit. You see it like a... So there's a moment and the church got lost in it. It doesn't matter making meetings with the youth. It's, it doesn't exist. This is the moment. So there's a, a powerful nation arose and the world enters into the church in a violent way. Without without control over anything. The church is uh, out of control. You cannot control the youth, you cannot control the adolescents. Now, our greatest concern with is with the adolescents. We are preparing the adolescents. Our great concern, the children are getting ready, but the adolescents are really a problem. Because in truth, it's a biological event. The hormones are flowing. The mind is psychologically maturing. It's a process, a scientific, bio biological, described by so many people. But the enemy takes advantage of it. Look what the prophet says. And look what he says. So, the, when you speak about the fig tree, what is the fig tree a type of? It's the, the type of Israel. But when the church speaks of a vineyard, it's the type of the church. Look, lament like a fig He has laid waste of my wine and ruined my fig tree. The lament like a virgin is covered in sackcloth because she's lamenting. What is the lament of the church? What is the virgin of the youth? Is the first church. Is the lament of the church. The prophetic lament of the church is described in the f from the first church. 
What, where was the first church? Where did go the, the, the fellowship and the intimacy that church had with God? Everything that happened in the primitive church. So lament. Lament like a virgin girded with sackcloth for the husband of the, her youth. The grain offering and the drink offering has been cut off from the house of the Lord. So Joel is having a vision of a moment. So he says, have we cut off from the house of the Lord? The, the priests mourn who ministered of the Lord. The field is wasted. The land mourns for the grain is ruined. What is the wheat? What is the wheat? And the woman plays, you remember? Uh, Leaven on the three measures of wheat. What is the What's the wheat? Uh, the type of is is the word. The word in our days it has become meaningless. People uh, quoted the Bible in the most absurd situations. They involve the word with is scandalous things. Even hard for you to understand. What kind of mind can do something like that? So the the. Weed is, is being destroyed. There is a preacher in Brazil that once he was preaching on a church. He said, he said, point out to me, a servant of the Lord, that is poor. He's crazy. He's crazy. Peter was probably the owner of a, a fishing boat, a wonderful fishing boat exporting fish to Europe. Paul must have been the owner of a, a factory of tents because he sold so many. Jesus had to be born amongst the animals in a manger. He was not able to uh, enter into a hotel in the city because he didn't have money had to go to the caves to sleep to hide from the cold. What, what, are, what is he talking about, the, the rich? So, Zacchaeus was rich? No, not everyone is rich. God is not concerned about riches or beauty or anything. The other day I was on Manaim and was presented to, introduced to a young man. He was a music producer from a, a famous TV channel. So then I, he was introduced to me. And I, I said, hey Amen. I am of, of your own generation. Hey, but you, you were that man. Now you... And we are amazed with these people that he was a famous singer in the past. He's now from the church. You see these people God's operating now, removing these people that was in the secular world without um, looking at their social class or beauty of money or money. Why? Because we're living a moment in which the enemy of our souls has done this. He entered, so, so what you have, the destroyed word. Be ashamed of uh, farmers. The wine is for the grain is ruined, the new one is dried up, the oil fails. So then there is no presence, presence of the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit does not operate. I was with the director, there was a seminar in Lithuania and the director of the seminar of Lithuania, he was very sad and he told me that he, he was going through a very serious crisis. My preacher that prepares other pastors for Denmark, Sweden, and you know the average of age of the pastors of the Denmark, Sweden, and Norway. Do you know the, the average of age is 60 years of age? There is no youth. There is no youth. But pastor, why don't we have youth? Because the word lost meaning. The youth don't believe in the word. The word has no sense. 
if you say something, they go against it, they come with philosophy and theology and they destroy everything. The grain is ruined. That's the crisis. This is the moment of the church. That's the truth. Then the wine is dried up. The oil fails. Be ashamed, you farmers, because you are ashamed because there's a go the, this is a gospel. There is no power that does not transform anybody. I told you a story before. I was a student. I had evangelized. He had become a convert, and it was in the third year of college. And I sat uh, on a restaurant, and our college had a restaurant, and the students would go there. Our college was, uh, was uh, the entire day. You had to study a whole day. And I sat at the table with a group of young women. Me, my friend, and in front of me sat two women. So when I put the tray, I thank for the food. When I open up my eyes, the girl, the girl right in front of me began to smile. And that bothered me. And she said, are you Christians? So then it's, it's pretty obvious. Politely, I said, yes, I am. And they said, oh, we are as well. But we don't do what you do. I don't think it's necessary in front of everyone. Are you closing your eyes in order to pray? So, yeah, of course, you're right. So I, I told her, do you know why you're right? I don't know what your church, what is your church? You're right because you are ashamed of the church, right? Yeah, you're afraid, you, but you need to be ashamed because the gospel that you serve and live must be a gospel weak, a gospel, a gospel corrupted, a gospel without power. Uh, gospel demoralized. I should be ashamed, of, uh, but I'm mine. I'm not ashamed of because I live live uh, in a gospel that I'm not ashamed of because because my gospel has the power of God. So I'm I'm not ashamed. So then she, her friend was a little scared. So they politely, without no uh, changing the tone of my voice. Where there is a saying that says in Brazil, whoever wants to say, say s s whatever they want may hear something that they may not want to hear. <laughs> so, uh, be ashamed, your farmers, the well, your vineyards, for the wheat and the barley, because the harvest of the field has perished, the wine has dried up, and the joy has run right out. So now enter into the mind of the prophet and see what he's saying. He's describing what he's saying. So he says, Gird yourself and lament your priests. That's what the will you who minister before the altar Come lie all night in sackcloth, you who minister to my God for the grain offerings and the drink offering uh, withheld. So the day, the coming of the Lord is here because uh, he should not have spoken about that because the day of the Lord was not near. But why would he say that? And he keeps talking about this. And now, verse 14. Else here. Then he begins to say the following. So, chapter 2, he says the he is going to speak about the point of the Spirit. Sound the trumpet, and and what what was the the trumpet for the Jewish people? The the trumpet was an instrument that he made out of the horn of the goat, and the Jews knew knew exactly the sound of the trumpet. No one else knew; only the Jews knew the sound of the trumpet. In a battle, which was a shofar, there are several types of sounds. Only the ones who knew the sound of the shofar were the Jews. 
if they were in a battle and the enemies were around them. So then the, they sounded the shofar. Only people knew. So sound the trumpet in Zion and be perturbed, all the inhabitants of the earth, because in Zion, because Zion is the type of the church. The church is seeing the signs that are happening around of the coming of Jesus, and the world is perturbed. You see what is happening in the world, the misery, famine in Africa, the situation of the governments, the situation of the world. So the peoples, they are perturbed because this, the horn is being blown, not for the world, but for the Zion, or in other words, for the church, because the voice of the Spirit is heard in the church. The world doesn't hear the voice of the Holy Spirit. That's what the book of Revelation it says, who has an ear, listen to what the Spirit tells the church. That's what it says in the Revelations. Days of darkness and sadness. So, the, uh, 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 the chapter 2, so there is a new people, a powerful people. So, this is the last church. So, a powerful people. He describes a powerful people. He describes at the beginning of chapter 2. The like of whom has never been. Verse 2 or chapter 2. He's describing a people that has a power that has never been before. And he says, Now will there ever be any such after them? Because this people is going to be removed. The Holy Spirit is going to use the church of the last day with great power like it has never been used before. God's going to use the church with great power. The Lord is using the church with great power like it has never happened before and it's not going to happen in the future because this is the last phase of the church on the, on the earth. Even for many successive generations, a fire devours before them. The church walks. It's like the Garden of Eden ahead of the church. Why is he mentioning the Garden of Eden in verse 3? What is the relationship with the Garden of Eden? What happened to man on the Garden of Eden? Man sinned. And God removed from, from man the right. So now, in order for him to come, he had to go through the sword, the flaming sword. Why? Because his return, the man's return to the original state of what God had prepared for him, what was God's project for him, is going through the word in flames. The sword in flames is, is the word revealed to be conducted once again to a place where he should never have left. This is the moment of the church. And the prophet begins to describe the appearance of this proof. The appearance is like the appearance of horses and like swift steeds. So they run with a noise like chariots of a mountain. They leap. Like, those, like a powerful people is being prepared for the battle. On verse 5. I already mentioned uh, for some, I'm not sure if I told everyone, but it was on the seminar last year in Italy. And they brought um, a lady, I don't know why, but she brought a rabbi to watch a seminar. See, a rabbi from the city of Milan. And she said, there is a rabbi that is going to watch the seminar. So after the first class, it was very impatient. Or they gave class, but there was a... Uh, a class about fourth and fifth measure, and he was very uh, excited and left the, the class and he held on my arm and he spoke in Hebrew. I don't understand anything about Hebrew. <laughs> a little bit, we know, but when the, he began speaking in Hebrew, I didn't understand anything. So the person that was beside him said, uh, interpreted and told me that he was saying that it was a son of Abraham. Then he said, You are from the lineage of Abraham. 
No, no, no. He, you, you were one of ours. I see in you a people that is prepared for a battle. You know what the battle he was talking about? He's speaking about the last battle. Why? Because he knows about the last battle. He's Jews. He's Jewish. He knows that the final battle is going to, the battle of Armageddon is going to happen. He knows because the prof prophecy of Daniel. He was very excited with this because, in fact, he told me what, what was prophetic. The church is getting ready for battle. But the church of this time is preparing for a moment which is it's the church's departure. Israel is going to have the final battle, but the church is not going to participate on this judgment because there is no condemnation for those that are in Christ. So when Prophet Joel describes there is a people that a powerful pope ordained for the battle. Before them, the people ridden in pain, all faces are drained of color. They run like mighty men. They climb the wall like men of war. They don't deviate. So it is the people that is ordained, organized. They have a secure direction. The Lord is giving us a doctrine so we can get ready for this moment. Why? Because the action of the enemy at this moment is to um, get us to go astray. The world listens to many voices. The world listens to many voices. But the world is not listening to, voice, to the voice of the Lord. It is not listening to the voice of the Holy Spirit. You need to listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit. The youth needs, needs to listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit. And God wants to do this. And sometimes the operation of the Holy Spirit at this time is so so important so evident that sometimes you, you, you are surprised you see the case of that man I already told you before and I'm, I'm telling you again I remember in college I had a friend and she was kind of crazy she was actually completely crazy she was addicted to drugs she would come in class completely high using cocaine, all sorts of um, miserable things. He even used to inject drugs. And we were in the fifth year, and the federal police apprehended her a couple of times. So the justice, the federal justice, demanded that she could should be expelled from the college because she could not become a doctor, a crazy doctor like that. So she, in the fifth year, there was a process of that would lead to her spell. That she sat w with me at the table. I was talking to her, and she looked at me, and she said, "Amadeus, why some people are happy and others are so miserable?" And I answered, "Because they choose." Don't you think that Jaws, that God is unfair? And I said, "No." God, God gives man the choice, the right to choose. God gave you the right even to not to believe in Him. You see how much uh, option God gave you? God allowed you to choose the good and evil, and you chose the worst. And I said, Amadeus, yes, I chose the worst. Amadeus, if I had a gun, I would just shoot my head shot so uh, you see the desperation of this young lady and I told her you don't need to do this and she said I, I have no solution for myself and I asked do you want to go to my church and she was so crazy she said I'll go so then I, I left and we had a class on the afternoon and then we went straight to the church Jonas was the pastor of my church in Vic Victoria and she went there and Jonas prayed for her. It was on Thursday. On a Friday, we didn't have uh, school on Friday. And this woman accepted Jesus on this service with, with Jonas. She was a, a, a tall girl, so very pretty. On Monday, she comes uh, dressed all in white, well produced, and with her, her hair combed. She came to the college, everybody stopped. We're a group of 75 students. Everybody stopped to see her entering to the class. 
elegantly she sat down and everybody started saying what happened so when the class was over everybody started asking what happened to you and she sat right next to me so then I'm a Deus because I had converted one and she was the second so then we became three so then Amadeo he just turned your head she said no I had an experience with God and became a Christian the change of this woman was so radical so radical that the teachers gathered and said look her change was so radical there is no way we can allow this process to go forward. She spent the fifth year and sixth year and the, the justice then revoked the request to spell her. The judge decided to the extinction of the process. She graduated and on the day of graduation it was a big amphitheater. It was a thousand people. Everybody knew because in Victoria everybody knows we had only two colleges there. We are you know college is federal. Everybody wanted to go to the federal because it was free. Now only entering to the federal who didn't have money. The ones that had money went to the private school. So so on graduation on the office, everybody was there. So on the moment when her name was mentioned the table where uh, all the teachers and the director they all stood up and applauded her standing standing ovation when she was walking to receive her diploma a life transformed by the power of God there's a people at this time that God is going to use in this way and God wants to use in this way people are going to be transformed by, by the power of God don't be don't be amazed because we're going to see things there are going to be amazing amazing I had on my church a brother he was a little bit crazy <laughs> no, no I don't think he was a little bit he was completely crazy but he did a couple of things that you would think oh it's impossible this guy being so crazy look he was crazy he was coming from uh, the seminar he participated on the he spoke about Jesus everywhere he didn't care he was coming down from Mane from the seminar and on the road uh, uh, homeless completely dirty with a backpack and the Lord told him stop pick him up and he stopped and picked him up and he was telling me, Amadeo, the guy entered into my car and stunk the whole thing. He was dirty, he was big beard. He didn't say anything. Then I said, enter. And he entered into my car. So I went home. When I got home, opened the gate. And my my wife said, what the heck is this? And he said, don't worry, don't worry. I brought him to the bathroom. He wouldn't say anything. I gave him a bath he was thinking so much I gave him a bath I cut his hair and his beard put new clothes he was even a person reasonably looking and I brought him to the church after the message the man became a Christian and then he began to to speak who he was who are you and the guy began to cry and I went to the world because I wanted to die because I lost my family in an accident I was completely alone I own several properties I was rich so I decided that my life had no meaning so went out to the world just to die and that path God spoke to me the miracle of the, the primitive church happens today because the people there's a, there's a different people that God has risen to this day but it's not to speak about gospel not to sing beautiful everybody can do that beautiful people singing oh God is wonderful God oh my Jesus 
Uh, no, it's very easy to do. You just need to be good looking, uh, charming, have a beautiful voice. No, do this, listen to the voice of the Spirit and take a person from the misery and then listen to the voice of the Spirit. God has risen the people at this time like this. Joel saw these people in the midst of the misery of a people, a situation of a people, and the people of God, the destruction of the people, a vineyard destroyed, there was no weed, there was, uh, they, were, they ran out of everything, but in the midst of all of it, there was a uh, different people, when there was abundant misery, the super abundant, the grace. Nobody's going to dress out his brother. Each one is going to go on his way and through the same sword will throw. Nobody forces your brother. Nobody can force your brother. You are not going to have allowance if you don't come to church. One month without allowance. You don't need to pressure your husband. After all, somebody is going to have to be left behind. So the church can be called the church that was raptured. Maybe it's going to be a husband. I don't know, don't want this to happen, but somebody has to be left behind, right? Somebody has to be left behind. The Bible says that there, out of two, one will be taken, the other will be left behind. That's in the Bible, the prophetic sermon. We have to be to fight, so we are, we are not the ones that are left behind. But if your husband wants to stay, let him be. So then, the, if a people is raptured, um, he can say, "Oh, my wife went, my my son also went, and my was left behind." It's in the Bible. That's all right. I'm not saying anything out of the ordinary. It's in the Bible. They're not going to be wounded. They're going to walk around all the cities. They're going to go up the houses. In front of them, the earth is going to shake. They will shake the sun and the moon. Everything is described there. They proceed, they arrive because the Lord raises. Look what the prophet says. His voice in front of his uh, army. Because many are for his camp is very great. So this is a camp. In Holland, there is another camp. And in Brazil, there are many camps. There are many camps because the arm, but the army is only one. But the army is only one. This is the moment of the church. That's why you saw in chapter two what was mentioned on the first. Exactly this about this is the moment of the church. So the Lord said, "Convert toward me all, with all your heart." So it's showing exactly the period of the church. What we have been saying, well, it may be the topic of the future classes. I even spoke with the brethren. I even mentioned maybe the necessity of us to begin the year 2018 and the Sunday schools speaking about the judgment which is about the judgment which it is interesting then we're going to speak about how important is it coming to the point of the babylon we're not going to call babylonia as a religion babylon is a power of course many a few religions may be involved with the babylon because the description of the prophet daniel is fulfilled in the in relations because babylon there's a, a intimate relationship with the church we will see we're going to speak about the antichrist many people think that antichrist is a person don't make this mistake many people they're unaware think if you enter into the book of Re revelations with human reason it's like diving on um, a, a place with filled with sharks and thinking you're going to survive <laughs> the book of Revelation is a book extremely spiritual when John described the book of Revelation, he was in another dimension, which was not the human reason. So in order for you to understand the book of Revelation, you need to be in this same dimension. 
So he's speaking about Antichrist, 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 Antichrist is not a person, it's a power. I'm just going to tell you this. The beast, the beast, the beast that came, that was wounded, that was, that is, every, all of it has a relationship. But I'm going to say this ahead of time. This is the point that we're going to speak when we come to the judgments. We are leaving the moment of the judgment. The, we are not living in the moment of the great judgment, but the moment of judgments. We are going through the period of the beginning of pain, not the beginning, not the end. And the church is in the book of Joel in the chapter first and second, which has no relation, chronological relation, because the time of God is not ours. Our chronology is chronos in the Greek. The Bible speaks of it. Chronos is our chronology. The chronology of God, of God is Kairos. So there is no time. So in the New Testament, is a time that's linked to the light. So there's no time. So there's no chronology. So in the same way that the book of Revelation has no chronology, the great greatest mistake that the scholars thought that when they studied the book of Revelations, they think that the book of Revelation has a chronology. It has no chronology. The, the tops are mentioned in the beginning, uh, then go to the beginning. So there's no chronology. But only to emphasize what was mentioned in chapter 1st, actually on the first day, and the chapter 2, it speaks of the moment of the church and moment of Christianity. And the church has, the Lord has risen for this time. I'm not speaking about a denomination. I'm not speaking about the, a denomination. I'm speaking about a people. But the people needs to be identified with this. Oh, but the God is the same. No, it's not. Don't think that uh, this is true. The enemy has placed this thing in people's mind. God is one. That's not true. Our God is not the same as the God that is governing the world out there. It's not. So all the paths will lead to the same place. No, they're not. So if you take a plane here in Fort Hollandale, and then tell the pilot, oh, go, go anywhere. They're, they're going to lead to region in Sao Paulo. You end up in Africa, in another place, you end up in water. <laughs> it's going to be an inferno. Do a test here. Take the route here. Take the street here. 95, I-95. Instead of going to the north, you go to the south. Then you say, I'm going to Boston. Uh, you know, go to that direction. Every, you end up falling on the Caribbean Ocean. You're going to be eaten by sharks. You never get into Boston. So the paths don't lead to the same uh, place. But the, the Bible says that there is only one path. The moment is this. We live in a moment. I'm not criticizing anybody on a, on religion. None of it. The people is one people. It's the people is, is the people that listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit. You don't need to argue, you need to give a, an amazing show, because the enemy doesn't care about it. And in fact, I always say in my classes, I say that beautiful service, the most beautiful services that I've ever seen is in the United States. I had finished my seminar. I was, I was in a city, I don't know if it was in New York. I know it was Chicago. I was in a hotel. I finished my seminar. So then I went to the hotel and then I turned the TV on and a service was about to begin. I was amazed with this service because it was a beautiful place. The seats were very comfortable. A wonderful place. And I tell this on the seminar. And I was amazed because, because it was a choir, very well tuned. It's like uh, the instrumentalists were, it was a fabulous thing. And the speaker told, spoke the name of the pastor, introduced the pastor. The sound system said, with you, pastors, such and such. And the pastor came out of the curtains. It was a beautiful thing. <laughs> he came from in between the curtains, a good looking guy. He was a very good looking guy. Blown, uh, the hair was a little bit long, blue eyes, with a suit, wearing a suit. You know, the suit. Uh, 
when you <laughs> it look like a beetle everybody clapped and he bowed sent his kisses and I was uh, I was watching him oh, it looks good and the guy was good looking the women was crying I don't know if it was emotion because the guy was good was good looking he went to the piano and played amaz in an amazing way he sang and the crowd was always going crazy my brother to watch there's nothing better than that I was watching I spent the whole night watching he sang well he was well well tuned and the piano was beautiful the orchestra behind him the the guy was good looking even I thought the guy was good looking <laughs> and now I ask you do you think that this transforms man's life no then see there uh, there are people that are ugly singing out of key <laughs> I remember Jairo yeah. that once we went to a restaurant it was Jedoti, me and Jedoti, after the, the dinner, he joked, bring the bill to the ugliest man at the table. <laughs> so then the waiter went around and then he came very uncomfortable. But you bring the bill to the, young, to the ugliest man at the table. <laughs> so the guy went back. They said, no, you, you are the one who is going to have to pay. He spoke to Joel, but the, very well. But one, one day, we went to Recife, another state. There was an archaeolo archaeologian, well known in the entire world, in Egypt. He was an atheist. And Pastor Bassi spoke to him and tried to preach, preach to him, and he didn't believe in anything. And Jairo. They spoke to him about so many things, discoveries, and Jairo was there. So when the message was over, then he he said, Do you be, do you accept that we pray for you? Then he said, No, no problem. Accept. So then he knelt down. So then he said, Jairo, pray for him. And then Jairo went, put his hand on his head, and he said, Lord, reproach this spirit of of being a doctor <laughs> and didn't even know that this this spirit of being a doctor existed <laughs> my brother the guy began to cry my brother we are in a time in which the Holy Spirit is going to operate he want he's going to operate to those that open up their hearts and listen to his voice you think that God is going to Going to use uh, the Lord is going to use the youth, the women. Maybe you are in the house. You think that everybody's fine. They have a lot of money, but they are all miserable, dying. They don't have anything. They are desperate. And people, there is one thing that does not purchase happiness, peace, interior peace is different. God, I give you my peace. I don't give you like the world gives. People think that the suicide. Remember, one of those richest women, a uh, hair of a magnet. She was in Buenos Aires. Uh, she went to Buenos Aires and she committed suicide all of a sudden inside of a hotel. Why? There's a song that says, The souls are tired. The souls are tired because they, they don't have relief. You know why? Because God wants to operate in the world. Don't have any mercy. The one who dwells in the world has no mercy. The world, but the Lord is using a church that should not be ashamed. You know, I went to Russia and I heard experience of, of a, a man. His brother, he was in Moscow, one of the greatest authorities of the Communist Party. For the teacher of the college, he was a teacher of 
atheism there there was it there was this teacher of atheism and there was a woman it was a very simple woman she was poor she used to clean my ho my room and one day she came to me and said you should go to my church but I liked her so much that I said you know that you cannot speak that with me I can send you to send you to prison then she said oh I'm sorry so two weeks later she came back and said but it would be so good if you went to my church and then I told her look for the love of God don't do this I like you so much if my superiors know that a person like you that work like this saying something like that to me I can be punished a month later she came back and said today there is a special service don't don't you want to go and I said Amadeo it was winter 30 degrees below zero I don't know what what took me and I said I'm going to the service I'm going to see what it is she didn't have a car she was very poor and I put her in my car and enter into a place of so cold um, in the middle of the forest there was a little house a group of Christians that thought they were going to break everything up everybody shouting glory to God and all of this and I answered that when the pastor saw me he was uh, pale as white as, as the walls he was thinking he, this guy came here to send everybody to prison but the pastor began the mass and he's after the mass he said do you want to accept Jesus and I don't know what happened to me something entered to me that was so powerful so powerful that I said I not only accept Jesus but since you baptized I want to be baptized because there was a hole because everything was frozen I was baptized with temperature below 30 in the frozen water almost frozen I was baptized when God wants to operate don't be afraid of people don't be afraid of you know, ugly faces on high positions his people are there they need to hear a voice the soul is crying inside of them and you come don't tell the person tell their soul that is inside of them and say Jesus loves you do this go to the church at this time and nothing can go against the church because the church is powerful tired so let us sing this Hey! 
Glory to God. The Lord has given a revelation here. He has revealed that a woman, a lead is here. She said, because she, she has disobeyed the Lord in something. She said unto the Lord, in something she did that displeased the Lord. And the, the spirit, the enemy has placed in her heart that she's over. She needs to give up on everything. She's even thinking about giving up. But the Lord is telling her that tonight the man's heart is deceiving. And the enemy is the father of, of lies. The Lord is giving you forgiveness and restores your life. There is also a lady that comes here with her hair is completely entangled. And an angel was combing her hair. Now, entangled hair speaks of thoughts and ideas and all this. And you begin to listen to things like this. Listen to the enemy. And the enemy is terrible. But the Lord wants to change this. The enemy says. He speaks, you know. Sometimes he he speaks using people. Sometimes he places this straight in your mind. A co-worker, your boss. Sometimes our husband is not very well prepared. A son. Can use anybody. Even Sometimes even a brother from the church unexpectedly the enemy is used Peter it was terrible so you need to be always vigilant pleading because sometimes you have thoughts you see the situation you know? so it's terrible right but thanks to God let us stand up Lord we praise your holy name we glorify you in your name, that's, we say that the wonderful grace of the Lord Jesus, love of God, and sweet and tender, consider to the Spirit, be with you now and forever. Amen. The church may be seated. We're a little bit, a little bit over, I know. Tomorrow I'm leaving. I'm coming to the Sunday school. So Sunday night, you can come because the service is going to be over sooner. I don't like sometimes. I, I'm happy that my wife didn't come and my daughters. They said, oh, daddy, I couldn't stand anymore. You take finish the service too late, and I only realized that I was finishing the service so late, too late, and corrected myself from many times because I was entering to the church. There was a mother coming up with two uh, twins, very young children, They're speaking a lot, and one looked to the other and said, "Mom, today's it's Tuesday, right? Who is preaching today?" And the mother said. I think Tuesday, I think it's Amadou. And the other said, oh, mercy. <laughs> and I said, mercy, why? Uh, today we're going to be live late, living late. And I said, yeah. So then after this criticism, I began to try and finish a little earlier. Just today.